right? D here and D here are supposed to cancel out. You get pi DL back. So if you set up equation like this and you measure cup mixing temperature of the fluid into the pipe and cup mixing temperature of fluid outside, that means you know these two numbers. Okay? You measure the flow rate, you can calculate mass flow rate. If you know type of fluid, you know CP. Diameter of the system can be measured. D and L will be measured. All right? And then delta TA can also be measured based on temperature difference from the surface of the pipe at the inlet point and the outlet point. By using that, you can calculate heat transfer coefficient. Okay? So people have done something like this for every system available. And then they come up with some kind of fitted empirical equation so that you can calculate HA for specific circumference. Uh, circumstance. Okay? Now, if you repeat the whole calculation process using different form of equation here, change from arithmetic mean to logarithmic mean, and then you can calculate HA and H log mean, and then you can compare it. Which one is better? It is found, you can see a graph shown in your textbook that H log mean is better. All right. Up to this point, any question? Did you get any of this? Okay, um, this is just brief introduction for unit operation three. In actual practice, and it makes no sense to use energy in form of electricity to heat fluid up because electricity costs money. So in, in the industry, people like to use um, hot stream of fluid that is supposed to be waste and use that kind of energy to preheat the feed stream. Okay? So suppose your fluid, I mean if you have, you're taking unit operation two, right? Okay? So if, if the product from the distillation column is somehow warm, after distillation column the fluid coming out, the fluid should have high temperature a little bit higher temperature, like in, <coughs> in the refinery, okay? The product coming out has higher temperature than feed coming in. That product is supposed to be stored in the tank. The energy itself is waste, right? Because it must cool down by um, release, temperature, release energy to environment. This, that's called waste heat. And people do not like that. So instead of waste the heat out, they're trying to bring that warm product as a heating media for input to the distillation column. So if I have a product from distillation column which is warm, and I like to 
use them to use energy, that energy, to warm my feed stream up. I can have my feed stream go in here. <coughs> if the feed itself is cold, okay? And I like the feed here to be warm. I like it to be warm. So that in this relational column, the heat duty in the reboiler can be reduced. I think you understand that, right? Yeah. Okay. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the product coming out from the distillation column as heating media. So this one is heating media. Okay. By using this kind of configuration, I have a double pipe, two pipes, um, a line coaxially. The fluid outside is warmer than the fluid inside the, the pipe here. This area, the donut area here is called annular. We talk about annular flow once in momentum part. Okay? Now, as long as the red fluid here, the heating media here, is hotter than the feed inside the pipe, there will be heat transfer along the way. Okay? So if you plot between temperature with respect to length, of the pipe. Temperature of the feed here is supposed to increase. And temperature oops, is supposed to increase. Temperature of the heating media is supposed to be decreased. Can this temperature, the red one, goes lower than the blue one? No, it cannot. Once they are equal, heat transfer stops. Okay? So, the difference in temperature at this point would be driving force for heat transfer at inlet. So you may call this one delta T1. Here, you have delta T2, driving force at outlet. This setup here is called double pipe heat exchanger because it has two pipes. It's called double pipe heat exchanger. This is the simplest one that you are going to learn in unit operation three. All right. You can flow the heating media co-currently. In this case, these two fluid flow in the same direction. It is called parallel flow or co-current flow, double pipe heat exchanger. You can also flow um, countercurrently. Okay? If you flow it countercurrently, then temperature profile of the hot media or the it may look something like this. If the blue line flow from the left to right, the red line may flow from the right to left. You may flow the heating media backward, okay? If you do so, then the temperature difference would be different. The pattern of temperature difference would be different as well. This is called countercurrent double pipe heat exchanger. Okay? For the calculation, for the calculation, we will focus on the heat transfer. Okay? The first thing is, in double pipe heat exchanger like this, there will be no mixing of fluid. The fluid in the annular and fluid in the pipe will never mix. You will have a wall of this pipe to separate these two fluids. Okay? When you calculate, you do the calculation regarding the heat exchanger like this, 
normally we will focus on energy balance. Okay? An energy balance that you will focus will be three parts. First will be energy balance of the feed itself, the, the fluid in the, in the pipe. This is cold, this is warm. Temperature difference here should give you um, enthalpy change. Okay? So if you look into blue fluid like that, the mass flow rate times CP of the feed, delta T, suppose I call this one T inside uh, out to, if this one is T inside in one, you get Ti2 minus Ti1, right? This amount of energy or enthalpy change is corresponding to temperature change of the feed stream. You change from T1, Ti1 to Ti2, okay? It has enthalpy change because it receives energy. The energy received comes from heat transfer. So amount of heat transfer is Q. Okay? So that would equal to Q. Also, if you look from heating media itself, heating media here, firstly it should have high temperature. Suppose this is called TO1. Outside, for the inlet part, and down here, once it's come out, temperature will be dropped because it already gives its own energy to the fluid inside. Okay? So you have TO2 here. Again, you can take energy balance, W of the heating media times CP, times its own CP. times delta T, which is TO1 minus TO2. That's amount of energy change corresponding to amount of heat transfer from heating media to the fluid inside the pipe. Right? So the red fluid gives up energy. The blue fluid receives energy. The amount of energy give up, given up and amount of energy received supposed to be equal, okay? So these two amount of energy are equal. Equal to what? Equal to heat transfer coefficient A delta T according to Newton law of cooling. So these two equations are calculation based on thermodynamics. This equation is heat transfer. So in our class here, we use this part. I teach you this part. But in practice, you need to put them together with thermodynamics. Okay? So it does, it, it is matter which equation you use. If you use delta T log mean, this one's supposed to be H log mean as well. All right? <coughs> 